What's going on, guys? It's Cadence. Welcome back to season two, episode three of Rock Roads and Relics. Dude, this guest today, okay, he's on the rock and the countryside of Nashville. He's got a solo project. He's the drummer for Josh Grayson, and he's the drummer for the after school special. Like, what doesn't this guy do? My boy, Brian Russell Collins. Thanks for coming on. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, dude. So I, I don't even know where to start with you because you've got, you know, 800 different things we could go <laughs> talk about. I mean, I guess the, the first thing is, you know, you, you're one of those guys that's able to get on the rock scene and on the country scene in Nashville. You know, what's it like kind of bouncing between two scenes? I mean, you know, when I moved when I moved to Nashville, you know, I had no idea what I was doing. So I was like, man, do I want to stay being a rock drummer? Do I want to be a country drummer? So I kind of had to dive into both worlds. Just to, one, you had to learn kind of a little bit of everything. And once I found my niche, it, it kind of started working. So it's been pretty cool, you know, like the country stuff is really fun because, you know, that's what is mainly popular around here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I started doing the uh, after school special show and that just turned into a, a whole animal of itself. So it's been fun, man. You know, I, I love the aspect of kind of doing both genres because a lot of people think that Nashville is just country, yeah. but it's, it's really not. I mean, it's, it's, it's becoming a rock town. So it's, uh, it's fun, man. I've been, I've been enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. For sure. And do you see any overlap when you're, you know, going to shows for the country scene or going to shows for the rock scene? Do you see some of the same people coming out? Is there, is there anything like that? Yeah, actually a lot, man. Because I mean, if you go to a country concert now, depending on who you're going to see, it's basically like going to a rock show. I mean, it's, I mean, that's basically what it is. I mean, so with what I do when I'm on the road with uh, doing country stuff, I mean, the band that I usually use, we are a straight up rock band. So it's just, we get, we give everybody, everybody a high energy show the whole time. Cause I mean, that's what people want. They want to be entertained. They want to, they want to, you know, be in the moment and just have that energy for 90 minutes. And, you know, that's, that's what I love about it. So, I mean, and that's one thing I have to say, like how Jason Aldean has really kind of set that bar for a lot of bands and a lot of country bands. Cause I mean, he brought the rock side to country and that's what I love about it. So that's why I keep it going. Yeah, I was actually about to bring up Al Dean because I'm a big Al Dean fan. And I'm a big Rich Redmond fan. Oh, yeah, man. Rich is great. Drummer. Oh, he's a beast, you know. And he's like, he could he could go drum in, in you know, Pantera or, or Fall Out Boy or anything and fit right in. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Do you ever, like, have, you know, conflict of, you know, trying to schedule stuff for the rock scene or the, the country scene? Like, does stuff ever overlap for you? Um, I haven't had anything overlap yet. I mean, I... I started being really responsible now and made a Google calendar. <laughs> so um, it, I, I kind of space it out really, you know, I look at my schedule and you know what I do with all the stuff I do with the road and then whatever I'm doing in town. And I, I normally schedule it out pretty well. And the guys with after school special, you know, we're, we're all a bunch of buddies and it's really just a, a, a passion project. So when we're all like able to do it, we sit down with our calendar and like, Hey, what, what dates can we do? And we just, prioritize it different ways yeah yeah that's really cool and I like I like how you were talking about you know countries really becoming rock and rolls you know second cousin or whatever and yeah. I was gonna say you know your album your solo album that just came out pretty recently it's you know it's obviously it's got some country influence but it's produced like a rock record yeah man. you know it kind of sounds like a rock record what was it like you know combining those two genres for that album so um when I recorded my my solo album that has been something that's been in the works for a long 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 time and a lot of those songs were written I mean shoot what we're in 2021 now so I mean a lot of those were recorded and written back in 2012 and I was a big I'm a big emo kid so I mean, I'm always, I'm always going to be an emo kid but I started when when I came to Nashville that's when I started kind of getting used to the whole country scene and what country writing is about so I, I put a little bit of that influence in there, you know, just to see if it could cross, you know, with genres and stuff. So it, it worked out pretty well. Um, but recording the process and actually hearing those songs come to life was a, a really cool moment, uh, especially my song, Take Me Back to Carolina, was originally a country song. Yeah. And I wrote that with um, some guys I used to play with before, Lee Gant and Eric Gannis. 
both great musicians. I played with them for a very long time. And we wrote that song and we recorded it as a country song. So there's the original version is out there. Uh, what's, well, it's not released yet. Um, that, that version's not. Um, and then I talked with the guys. I was like, hey, you know, I'm recording my own solo album. You know, this is a song that's near and dear to my heart because I'm from North Carolina. And I just said, hey, I'm going to put my own spin on it. So I added the country aspect to it but i threw a little bit of rock, i mean more of a rock song so yeah I, I had to i had to give a little bit of love to both because i always if i write with anybody and if they're depending on what genre they are i want to make sure that i one do the song justice and two i want to make sure that i'm honoring the people that i wrote it with yeah for sure i know you said you were an emo kid were there any kind of emo band influences for that album oh god yeah man i mean <laughs> Um, I mean, Fall Out Boy, of course, um, was a big one. Um, I'm a big Story of the Year fan. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, and I was just in St. Louis this weekend, so that, they're from St. Louis, so I'm like, ah, you know, it's, I feel good about that. So, Story of the Year was a big, um, a big influence um, on some of the stuff with the band and the thing with the album. Um, I know my song, Where You Are, kind of took a little Story of the Year kind of side with it. Um, the song Summer's End was more like, I guess you would cross it between like 30 Seconds to Mars with more of the pop side of yeah. pop punk. So, I mean, there's so many influences from this album. And, you know, a lot of people give me a lot of crap because I'm a I'm an 80s kid, too. So I grew up in the 80s. And you can't tell it. I look like I'm five. I act like I'm five. <laughs> but um, I'm a huge Huey Lewis and the News fan. Um, so I had a lot of Huey Lewis and Bruce Hornsby kind of, um, you know, influences on that with the song alone. Um, there's a really big piano part at the beginning of that song. So I took a lot of inspiration from those guys. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's all kinds of stuff in there. I mean, like if you listen to the song real thing, it's kind of got a U2 kind of vibe. So I took, I took inspirations from kind of everybody's it's kind of all over the place, but I mean that's music man i mean it's it's art you're, you're constantly doing something new to evolve not only your craft but yourself but just to show your inspirations and that's that's what i took with it yeah well you know if, you're, if you keep doing the the same thing over and over again in music it's you know it's gonna get dull eventually so it's awesome that all these genres are you know colliding now i think that's something that nashville's really good at oh who, yeah man who, yeah who all played on your on your solo album so i only used three guys the whole entire time uh well I'll take that back. I had four guys. Sorry. Um, so I'm not sure if you've heard of a band in town. They're called Summer 97. Yeah. Um, they're a great band. And their drummer, Chuck Miracle, is my roommate. So oh, really? um, everyone thought I played drums on the album. I did not. I focused mainly just on the writing and the singing. Um, so I used Chuck Miracle on drums, Zanfret on bass, uh, Bronze James on bass. Um, I'm sorry, Bronze James on guitar. And then my producer, Trent Hollingsworth, he played bass on one song. He played the uh, cover, uh, Big Vibe. And then I, for piano, I used a good friend of mine, Nate Beatty. And that was, that was really the whole, the whole uh, musician side of it. But really, it came to life in the production because uh, Trent is just a, a monster, monster producer. And his ear for just making things sound huge was really big for me and when we were talking he's like here's what i want to make your album sound like i'm going to make it sound like a michael bay movie where there's just <laughs> explosions everywhere and if you really listen to some of the snare parts and like where you are summer's end um real thing it sounds like one some of the snares are sounding like bombs going off oh my they gosh re they, re they really are so, so I see it. I've got Transformers <laughs> action figures behind me. I, Heck know, yeah, dude. Heck bro, yeah, I grew man. up on Michael Bay. That's so funny. So yeah, that was the, uh, that was the um, kind of the idea with Trent. But all the guys that recorded on that album um, were just, they're monster guys. Uh, Bronze and Zan are actually my co-writers for Where You Are. And okay. it, it was really cool to have those guys on the album and just, you know, work with the guys that you write with and I'm I'm a I'm 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 very really easy but I'm also very picky like with who I use like mm -hmm. when I do production stuff because you know I'm 
I, I want everything loud and big and stuff like that. And those were the guys I felt were the, uh, the best guys for the job. And they did a hell of a job. And, you know, I'm very proud of the album. I'm proud of what it's done. And unfortunately, I've had to put, a little, put it on the back burner for a little bit because I had to focus on, you know, my, my main projects. So, but I, I'll probably do maybe a small tour with it, maybe yeah. late fall. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I was going to ask if you had anything, you know, coming up, any, you know, any shows, any new releases with the solo stuff. Well, I'm working on a couple songs. Um, I do have two songs that I'm going to record with Trent. Um, one that I just recently wrote uh, called Ghost, which is going to be a little, a uh, little heavy. It's going to be sweet, pretty heavy. Sweet. And then I've got kind of like a, a sappy kind of love song because I'm a sappy guy. Um it's called picture in your phone that we're going to record. But right now um, I actually just picked up a new project. So I've, I've put a lot of time into that and it's going to be taking up a lot of my time. Uh, yeah. And then with after school special, that takes up a lot of my time, but you know, it, I'm making music for a living. I can't complain. And I'm very grateful that I get to do what I get to do, especially at my age and still able to keep making music, man. And it's just a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, totally. Totally. What, what would you say, you know, obviously it's hard to pick because it's like picking your favorite child or your favorite guitar or something, but yeah. what do you, what would you say is your favorite of all your projects? I know that's, that's probably a loaded question. Man, that's a, that's a very loaded question. Um, well, I, I will say I, I really enjoyed, uh, I really enjoyed playing with Josh. Unfortunately, I, uh, I just stepped down from playing with Josh. That was a great, a great project. Um, I just signed on with a brand new artist, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, which I have my first rehearsals with this coming week. Sweet, so, sweet. Um, I would have to say, man, I mean, I've played in so many projects, but when it comes, I'll, I'll give you a couple. Um, my main project uh, that I'm coming into now, uh, which is Adam Sanders. Is, uh, he's a number one charting songwriter in yeah. town that I just signed on with. Uh, he's written for Cole Sundell and Dustin Lynch, John Party. I mean, Dirk Bentley, I mean, who, whoever. Oh, yeah. You know, so he's, he's a beast. He's yeah. And I'm telling you, learning that stuff has been amazing. Um, playing with Josh Grayson was it was so informative. It helped me grow um, on the uh, professional side because, you know, Josh was a very, a very big artist, uh, came from the American Idol scene. He had a couple number ones under his belt. And it really helped shape me as one as a drummer, but also as a band leader. And I can carry that to any role that I take from here on out. Um, so both of those were, both of these projects were really great, but I would have to say cover project that I've done. I would have to say after school special because we get to kind of bounce around with everything, man, because it's, we do eighties, nineties, two thousands rock. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much fun. And, you know, you get to do it with buddies that, one that are we all just get each other and we love to be stupid on stage and you know and it's not about the money it's just about having fun and really I mean music I mean yes we all want to make money we all we want to be there but at the end of the day it's all about making art and yeah and just having fun and just seeing the smiles on people's faces man that's that's what it is for me it has nothing to do with fame or fortune it's just all about having a good time and making people like feel like oh crap I've had a crappy week but hey I've got an hour and a half to just let loose and forget about life. That's why I do this. That's why I, I love playing music. And those are, that's why I do those projects are like some of my favorites. Just yeah, it's, it's been really for cool. sure. And that's when I talked to you after that writer's round at, at, you know, Tin Roof, like two months ago or whenever that yeah. was, that was definitely the vibe I got, you know, cause so many people in this industry are, you know, kind of, you know, put themselves on a, a pedestal or whatever, but you know, you're just, you're so easy to talk to so Thanks, down man. to earth about your stuff so it's you know it's awesome you know it's it's not every day you meet someone who drums for these famous country guys and you know has a title drum sponsorship and you know everything like that and it's just so chill so that's really cool you know it's that's I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human being just like everybody yeah. else man you know <laughs> yeah at the end of the day i mean yeah i mean i get it that when we get when you start kind of climbing that ladder of of starting from the bottom and then you kind of start going higher and higher and higher yeah i mean Things can change a little bit. I mean, egos can get involved. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. I do have an ego. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. But, you know, it's all about keeping it in check. And it's all about just staying humble. If you stay humble, and 
and I think with me, when it comes to like being in Nashville and especially with newer guys, it's like, I want to be the guy like you can always approach. Uh, yeah. Cause I don't, I don't want to be very standoffish or anything. That's not who I, who I am and who I, who I uh, perceive myself to be because I always want to make sure if there's new guys coming into town and they need help, I want to be that guy that you can call and just be like, man, this guy does this stuff, but man, he helped me get here. And that's, that's what it's all about for me. It's just all about being humble and helping everybody out. Yeah. Yeah, man. I guess I'll finish up with saying like, you know, the next year, obviously concerts are back, you know, full swing. Things are looking good. Where, where do you want to see yourself, you know, in 2022? What's, what's the next step? Man, I, I, I know for me, I want to see me being on the road, of course, and just playing bigger shows and just seeing the bigger crowds and just seeing everybody just smile and singing along and just getting back to that, that life that we all saw back in 2019, where we all just enjoyed just going to shows and having a good time, really. I mean, and one just not having to worry about being cooped up in a house. So. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Guys, Brian Russell Collins, stream the solo album, catch him around town in Nashville, catch him on tour. This guy's the best. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.